Hey everyone, welcome back to our series on Cruise Vacation 101. Here we are today at part four. Uh, just to recap where we're at, we've discussed the steps that somebody needs to go through in order to plan the perfect cruise vacation. And the first step was deciding how long a vacation you want to go on. That was in part one. Uh, that was then linked to part two, which dealt with the when and the where. And uh, I showed how those can all those decisions can all be linked together. And then uh, we discussed the various cruise lines in part three. And I tried to uh, help you narrow down the field a little bit because uh, I discussed how you can go on the internet and pull up cruise vacation or search for a cruise vacation. And you're going to be inundated with all sorts of selections. And you're going to be inundated with cruise lines. And there are a plethora of cruise lines to choose from. So I hope in part three we helped you to, to see that you can narrow those down to maybe the top what I called the top five. So today, now let's assume again that you've selected your when, you selected your where, you want to go to the Caribbean, and uh, now you've even selected the cruise line. It doesn't really matter for this discussion today on which cruise line you selected. So now the next decision, what type of stateroom do you want to stay in? And that's going to be tied also potentially to your budget. But let's let's go over the state the stateroom selections because this is a big decision in your decision process and it's one that you will hear varying opinions on and frankly you're just going to need to decide what's important to you. You're going to have people tell you that it does not matter which stateroom uh, that you choose and they'll try to tell you that you should stay in the cheapest stateroom because you're not going to be in your stateroom very much and blah blah blah. Well frankly uh, those that always say that and they state that as fact for everyone is just absurd and here's why I say that. Let's go over the categories, and I'm not going to go over each, all the individual numerous amount of categories because there's frankly categories within stateroom categories. And what I mean by that is you're going to have, first of all, an inside stateroom. That's a stateroom that has no windows. It's usually the smallest square footage type of stateroom on a ship. Then you're going to go up to ocean view, which can really be about the same square footage as an inside, but an ocean view is going to have a porthole or some form of window uh, in your stateroom that you can actually see to the outside. Then you're going to go up to what they call a balcony stateroom. And balcony staterooms are typically bigger in square footage, uh, but, but keep in mind they include in the square footage the square footage of the balcony. So that can be a little skewed, so keep that in mind. But a uh, balcony stateroom gives you more room uh, to move around uh, inside and out on your private balcony. Plus it gives you the opportunity to uh, go out on your balcony and watch the ship pull in and out of port. And then from there you go get up into the suite categories. And I'm not going to go in all the different types of suite categories that there are because each cruise line has various types of their own, what they call grand suite, penthouse, owner suite, etc. So really let's, let's look at the four. You've got inside, outside, balcony, and suite. And then within those categories, if you choose an inside stateroom, there's going to be pricing categories within inside. There may be five or six, depending on the cruise line. And that really is going to differentiate where you're going to be on the ship, whether it's going to be a low deck, a deck that's much higher up, or one in the bow of the ship, or in the uh, the back of the ship. And everybody has their preference on where they want to be. Now, I'm going to basically try to tell you why I prefer to be in a certain location on the ship. And I've stayed in a variety of, of staterooms. I've stayed in balcony, and I've stayed in inside. So I can kind of give you my opinion, I guess, on which one I prefer. But again, somebody that tries to, to lay down a law that says there's no reason to pay for X when you can when you're not going to be in your room that much I just I would discount their opinion to be honest with you because that's their own individual preference and it may not be right uh, for you and I'll bring up a couple examples here in a minute but so let's discuss the wear on the ship this is to me the most important whether it's inside ocean view or balcony I like to be in the middle of the ship and I try to get my clients as best as I can in the middle of the ship, whether it's a low deck or a high deck, and frankly, the low decks are okay. And here's why I say that. Imagine if I had a pencil, or this was a pencil, and and I laid another pencil here, and we teetered this back and forth this way. Well, imagine that's the front of the ship going down a wave, and then the back of the ship going down the same wave, and on and on. You'll see that the, the range of motion for the front and the back of the ship is much greater than right in the center of the ship. So that to me is why the, the middle of the ship is, is important for me when I choose my own staterooms especially and also for my clients. And then imagine you're going side to side where your ship is rolling. Again, look at the range of motion from the top of the ship to the bottom of the ship. And if I were to do a measurement to the water line from the top of the ship 
uh, down to the to the water line, you're going to see that the range of motion is much greater side to side um, in in rough seas if you're higher up. So sometimes being higher up, even though a lot of people think that being on deck 9, 10, 11, or whatever uh, has some sort of status to it, I honestly would be much better off, uh, in my opinion, to be deck 5, 6, or 7, or even 4, 5, and 6, uh, closer to the waterline, because as the closer you are to the waterline, uh, geometry and physics tells us that you're going to feel less of the of the ocean, uh, less motion, of, and less and have let, be less prone to getting seasickness. So there's my opinion on forget which category right now, but let's try to find a cabin, or I, I would tell you to try to find a cabin that's in toward the middle of the ship. Now let's discuss briefly inside versus outside versus balcony, and let's let's leave the suites to their own. own discussion some other day because uh, we're just talking a lot of people's budgets don't allow them to uh, to look into suites so let's discuss the most common inside outside and balcony here's why I, I do not agree that the type of stateroom is not important when somebody tries to tell you that you ought to just pay for an inside stateroom since you're not going to be in your stateroom very much I don't agree with that one th those people go back to the room to change clothes I know during the course of the day for various events whether it's to go swimming and then to go to a meal or go to dinner or whatever. So you're actually in that cabin or that stateroom a lot more than just going to bed. So discount somebody that says you're only in there to sleep because that, that's simply not true. So if you're in there during the day to uh, get ready for different events or whatever, sometimes that smaller cabin can feel a little claustrophobic to you, especially if you're in a cabin with more than one person, which most of you are going to be traveling with somebody and uh, some of you are with families. And imagine two or three or four of you in the smallest stateroom on the ship trying to get ready and and, and uh, walking over one another, so to speak. So I don't agree that uh, the smaller staterooms are just as good as the larger on a cruise ship. Uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't investigate an inside stateroom. I've stayed in an inside stateroom, and my budget drove for that particular cruise uh, the type of stateroom that I stayed in. And I got a nice deal on an inside stateroom, and, and I was okay with that. But I've also stayed in a balcony, and balcony staterooms are nice, especially, and here's another reason uh, or another thing to consider. Say it's you're on a sea day, and the weather's not ideal, so everybody is not at the pool. Uh, when everybody's not in all the various venues spread out around the ship, they're usually congregated more in, into some of the interior areas of the ship, and it can get crowded. So maybe you, for the one day at sea when the weather's not good, you just like to go back to your stateroom to maybe read a book or... Uh, watch a little TV or, or do a puzzle or just spend some quiet time. And now all of a sudden you're going back to an inside stateroom because you thought there was no difference, but all of a sudden you're spending a lot more time in the inside stateroom than you thought too. And uh, it may get a little closed in for you. So a balcony stateroom would be nice in that regard where you could at least open your balcony door and let some air in and uh, go out there and get some fresh air and maybe read a book on the balcony versus having to stay inside your stateroom and still have some privacy. So I don't agree with those that try to tell you you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that or I'll always do this. It's individual preference. and It's like reviews. You can read a review on a cruise line and have somebody say it was the best vacation of their life. Two reviews down, you're going to have somebody tell you why they would never ever go on that cruise again. And uh, honestly, what separates those two a lot of times is somebody's, uh, along with opinion, uh, is attitude and expectation and things like that. And frankly, if you're watching these series, I'm hoping that I help you set the right expectation by choosing the right cruise line for you and the right time frame, etc., to where you don't get on a ship and have it be completely different than you expected, because that should never really ever happen. So I hope I've helped you understand price differences naturally vary a lot between inside up to balcony. Uh, a lot of times, though, in the categories that are inside each uh, the subcategories like the five different interior interior room or inside category state rooms to go from an inside to the lowest category in ocean view may not be that much and it may be only a hundred dollar difference total for two of you so you might investigate going back and uh, upgrading yourself to a different style state room and uh, and ask your travel agent to show you the cost difference between upgrading to another category if you're getting up at the higher end of the of it of a certain category and I hope that makes sense so again, inside ocean view balcony prices vary from there on, and so you just need to determine your budget and then have your travel agent explain to you your options within your budget for that ship. And if you have to to go for an inside stateroom, that's fine. Try to find one on the middle of the ship to make it as most comfortable as it can possibly be for your cruise. 
Again, long video. Sorry about that, but that's a lot. Of, we got to cover a lot of information about staterooms, and, I, and I'm frankly still glancing over it. So leave your comments, questions. Be glad to answer your questions about individual staterooms or even uh, different ships and, and uh, their stateroom categories. Because frankly, Royal Caribbean has a, a promenade inside stateroom that is new to the industry, so to speak, new from the last five years or so when they introduced the Freedom Class. And that gives you a stateroom. Actually, it's before the Freedom Class, so excuse me. But it gives you a stateroom that's inside, but it has a bay window that overlooks the promenade that those particular ships, a certain class of ship with Royal Caribbean has. So that adds a little unique quality to that type of stateroom. It's frankly only available with Royal Caribbean. So anyway, I wore my NCL jacket today because I didn't want to show too much favoritism toward Royal Caribbean. I've sailed on both, and again, I've sailed on Disney, and I'm getting ready to go on my Princess Cruise here in a couple of months. So again, thank you for watching.